NordVPN.com slash Fightful makes my browsing experience better. Way better than yours if you don't use it. Why? Because I can block online trackers. I can block annoying pop-up ads and malware. I can browse safely, securely, wherever I am, even if I'm right here on all my devices. This laptop, actually this is a desktop. What, what am I saying? But this laptop right here, this phone right here, that router over there, the TV over there, all with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can also save on pay-per-views. Maybe you want to check out AEW without commercials. Maybe you miss the old WWE Network. Maybe you want to buy a big UFC pay-per-view with an overseas service at a much more affordable rate. NordVPN.com slash Fightful not only has you covered, but when you get one of their plans, you're effectively going to save yourself money. And I'm going to save you some more. Four months free on top of that deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful here with a name you know. You're going to see him at NXT New Year Evil, January the 10th, against Braun Breaker. He's a fellow Shaza McKenzie hater, which you know, already, unless I'm picking you to win next week now. As you should, and you know, I, I was always wondering, when am I finally going to get to talk to Sean Ross Simp, the biggest simp in the game? Mm. And today's the day. What a treat for Grayson Moore. I woke up early to come talk to you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's me. Woke up early. What time is it? Hey, bro. Like, 10, oh, it's almost 11, man. Hey, come on. Hey, I got a, I got a, I got a fun life. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I got a fun life. You know, like, early for me is different because late's different. Okay, fair. I thought maybe, like, you took a trip to Hawaii or something like that. But it's just, yeah, there you go. Okay, fair. Well, you're facing Braun Breaker. NXT, New Year's Evil. I, I know that you've actually, you've been in the ring with them a couple times between war games, live events. How is it that you're preparing physically, mentally for one-on-one, -on, -one, on television? Because that, that can be a little bit different. The dynamics are a little bit different than live events or, or big tag team matches. Of course it is. And, uh, and, and you know, this is this is the biggest show to start off the year, too, for the NXT Championship. It's the biggest match of my career, but... Uh, I knew this was coming. I knew me and Brian were, were, were heading on a collision course a year ago, you know? Uh, so since then, I've watched every Brian Breaker match. Doesn't mean if it's on TV, whether it was at a live event for the coconut shows that we do, whether it was here in the PC, maybe he was doing some training. My eyes have been on him. So I've been studying that guy for a while, and he's not smart enough to have done the same thing for me. So I know exactly what Brian's bringing to the table. He, he's a machine. He should not move that fast for how big he is. So I was smart enough to know that, and, and I know what I'm going to do. And I went home uh, recently for the for about ten days. I went home and I trained with with some of my guys from PWA, my company that I work with back home, because I needed people who who know me and know me best and got away from the distractions. Because this is the biggest match of my career. And you mentioned him moving fast for the size he is. I mean, you're not a small man. You're, you're so no, I mean, no. and, and you fly through the air with relative ease. So. When you see that, like how how different is that for you? Because usually, even though you're, you're bigger than your opponent, you have a speed advantage, you have an aerial advantage as well. D do you feel like you have that against a Braun Breaker? No. And like I'm being honest right now, like I'm going to this. I'm I'm always honest. That's the thing. I'm not stronger than him. I remember the first day I walked in the PC, I went to the gym, and that dude was like some ungodly amount bench, bench pressing, like it was nothing. Usually, I'm faster than people. He's now faster than me. You know, he has like this amateur wrestling background so he's a better wrestler than me too i'm gonna get my ass kicked next week hands down he's gonna beat me up but i'm smart enough and i my cardio is good enough that when it gets to that you know that 10 minute mark when he's gassed and he's trying to bark but <laughs> he can't get the breath out that's when i'm gonna take advantage because i'm a veteran people don't realize that i've been doing this a while and i'm very very smart at what i do and i always find a way to win deadline i found a way to win and it always happens and Braun is not smart enough to find a way to beat me is it awkward when you have a big match like against a Braun Breaker and you're strolling around the PC and you're seeing him putting up the weight or anything like that? Like, are you surprised we don't see more? We see stuff happen in the NXT parking lot all the time, but it seems like within the confines of the Performance Center, you guys stay pretty respectful. Hey, if you were here, you know I ain't respectful when I'm here. If I see that guy walking past, I'm going to say something every time. But he stays away. You know, he acts all tough on TV, all that kind of stuff. But when I say stuff to him here, he walks the other direction. You know, he's this nice, kind, respectful guy. Oh, thank you, Coach Bloom. Thank you, Coach Michaels. Oh, thank you so much. I'm not, lad. Um, and they're smart with that, though, too. They, they keep us away from each other. And largely, they keep me away from a lot of people because uh, I am who I am at all times. Um, and whether that's at the PC or an NXT show or wherever else, 
it is what it is. And some people can't handle that, but uh, that's love. That's who Grace Mauler is. At least I'm real. At least I'm real. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of fake guys in this business. There's a lot of nice guys that aren't nice guys, lad. So at least I'm real and I'm up front with who I am. Another guy that had some pretty good cardio is, is Ric Flair. You portrayed him on Young Rock. I'm, I'm interested to hear, like, how, how'd that come about? Like, did you audition for it? Did they call you up? Like, how does something like that happen? You're all over TV these days. You're damn right, lad. Well, it was, it was kind of like a lucky time where it was like when the pandemic happened originally, uh, Australia didn't really have many cases of COVID. So a lot of production companies just sent everyone over to Australia so that they could get it done easier because in america kept shutting down so like elvis film there i'm pretty sure the new hulk hogan movie film there um and they basically went out and they wanted actual wrestlers to be in the show so it just makes their life easier when they're doing wrestling scenes and stuff like that they don't have to teach someone it's already there uh and at the time i had bleach blonde hair they asked me to do a flare promo i'm pretty good at promos the accent was off but luckily i didn't have to talk um but i used to have bleach blonde hair back then too um so it was just they came to our like they messaged our wrestling school we need wrestlers who kind of look like this and uh when it comes to like acting like rick flair i think grayson moore is the best choice by far that was it that was far from like your first outside of wwe television experience to of course survivor have you ever been contacted to do the challenge there's a big crossover in challenge and uh wrestling fans um i won't give too much away that there there were some some Initial talks, some little whispers going around about some of the seasons, but um, I love that show. I say that all the time. That's my favorite show of all time. I've watched for a long, long time, and I had two two goals, you know, uh, when I kind of got to my 20s, was being on the challenge and being WWE. And I'm 50% there now, lad. Um, but right now, I'm focused on on what I'm doing here. I, sure. I love wrestling. This is what I want to do. I want to be NXT champion New Year's Evil next week on USA. I want to do that. I want to headline these shows in Charlotte. Uh, February 4th, and stand deliver in Stable Center. I want to go to the main roster. I want to take on the best. I want to show I can compete. I have things to do first. Uh, and a lot of these, you know, challenge guys, like, they have nothing else. Like, they literally sit at home and wait, begging for the call because they have nothing else happening in their life. Um, so i got some big things to do before I, I, I kind of look that direction. But it's something that I would love to do, though. You, you mentioned also wanting to go to the main roster. You did briefly pop up there recently. You faced Akira Tozawa. What was that experience like for you? Because... Getting those those looks at, at crowds outside of the Performance Center is something that NXT's doing. Going to Charlotte, traveling mm-hmm. all over the place. We, we saw it with, with uh, Stand and Deliver as well. But uh, what was that like for you being there? Did you feel like just completely natural being that element? It was the best. Um, I think, you know, with this uh, NXT crowd, like, it's the same people every week. You know, they love it. They come every week, you know. But you kind of get used to it. It becomes the same vibe. Like, I know who's going to sit in this seat and all those type of things. And then I went out there for that match with Tozawa, and, like, you look around, you're like, wow, this is <laughs> this, this is what the big time's like. But I felt completely comfortable. You never really know till you walk through the curtain. Um, you, you can kind of see the crowd beforehand. You can kind of hear it. But you don't know till you walk through. And the moment I walked through, I was like, yeah, this is where I belong. Um, and even getting there with, you know, like, it was like proper Tozawa, too. He wasn't a ninja anymore. It was like an actual Tozawa to fight against, which was sick. Um, so... That's where I belong, and, and I think a lot of people know that. Over the past year, year and a half, you've you've had a lot of stuff thrown at you, like Last Man Standing, War Games, Ladder Matches, a, a little bit of everything. The, the Iron Survivor Challenge, like you, you have had almost every type of match that NXT can throw at the wall thrown at you. How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel happy? I mean, I think a casket match as well, if I if I remember right, like that that this keeps coming your way. Like, nobody else is having all of this thrown at them but you. Now, I want you to think about what you just said there. There's a reason for that. I I excel no matter what. Like, and I think they know that here. Like, you give me anything. You give me any type of match. You give me a live microphone and I'll walk out and I'll, I'll kill it. I love the ability that I can do anything. If you want me to brawl, if you want me to technically wrestle, you want me to do that British crap, I can do that. I can literally do everything. And that's my value here. Bron Breaker, one-dimensional. What can he do? Big, strong guy, bark, few shoulder tackles, do some Steiner moves, that's it. Grayson Waller, you put me in any environment, I'm going to excel. And that's what that's what I love to do. That's the fun. You know, how many people can say they had a casket match in WWE? There are very, very few who are still active. I'm telling you that much right now. Um, but you put me in that, you put me in a ladder match, bang, I stole the show. Cage match, bang, I stole the show. Iron Survivor Challenge, bang, I stole the show. It's just what I do. Um and I, I love the ability to not be just doing the same thing every time. I hope they keep throwing these spanner in the works for me because, like, that's when I'm at my best. 
Well, that ladder match had a particularly wild situation. That elbow yeah, that- drop. That elbow drop. Like, honestly, <laughs> like, I saw that. A lot of people saw that, and they're like, we might not see him back for a while. But there you were, a couple of weeks later. Like, that is mm-hmm. that is unbelievable. What What went through your mind as you're up there and as you come crashing to the ground? Because, you know, a lot of people, even people that didn't like you, Grayson, were concerned about you. They were amazed by you. That was that was that was just wild to watch unfold. Yeah, uh, you know, well, I, I was supposed to go through Carmelo Hayes. That was the plan. Like, I could <laughs> yeah. see him laying down there. I'm like, this won't be too bad. Like, you know, he's got some beef on him. Like, this will be fine. Then all of a sudden, he's not there, and you actually see that moment. Um, so there's a really, really cool photo of me like doing like the through the legs, and then about yes. half a second later, you see me completely lose control because the lad's not there no more. Um, and I'll be like, the adrenaline in a match is the most beautiful thing of all time because like it hurt but i felt okay um i didn't know if i was going to be all right like i kind of felt all right and then i stood up to kind of hobble to the back and there was blood all over the floor and i'm like oh one of the one of the boys got busted open damn how'd that happen uh and then when i got to the back it turned out it was me and my elbow was all messed up that type of thing but uh i was all good you know i had about a week off the gym um, well, actually, technically not. I had my arm in a sling. I was doing some left-hand press, bit of cardio, but like, it was about a week off, um, the elbow, and then two weeks later, I was in a tag title for the match with my boy Sangha at the time. Um, but that's just, the show goes on. There's people in this PC who would sit in medical for six months. Oh, my gosh. You would have no idea, brother. These people spend anything. Oh, I've got to scratch my arm. I'm in medical. Sorry, can't be here a month. Grace them all turns up for work. Before we wrap up, uh, of course, a reminder, NXT New Year's Evil Tuesday, yes, USA Network. We're going to have, have a nice exercise here where we ask Grayson Waller to say nice things about some of his co-workers. Uh, this is, this is, have you ever seen those YouTube clips where you, you go on there and it says, this person buries the other person? We want to do the oh, opposite. Yeah. Grayson Waller shoots on Braun Breaker. You'll probably put yeah. that up as one of your news articles today, brother. All right, come of on, course. man. I know you. Well, I know you. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to get you to okay. say nice things about people. We'll start okay. with a guy that you've wrestled a bunch of times, Apollo Cruz. Oh, Apollo Cruz, hands down, one of the shiniest heads I've ever seen. First time I got in the ring with him, like I was blinded. That's why he got me, like bang, he got me the punch straight away because I just the glare off his head was insane. Very shiny head, Apollo Cruz. I'll give him that. that that's a compliment. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, Andre Chase. Oh, so many fantastic things I could say about Andre Chase. Um, his ability to have wrestling matches in a heavy sweater in Florida in summer. Like, you haven't been in the locker room with Andre Chase after a match, but that dude stinks. Like, he absolutely smells, but he goes out there and he does it. He performs. I wore a fur coat for one night and I hated my life. But Andre Chase does that every week because he loves his terrible university. Oh, man. Uh, the, the guy that you wrestled against on main event, Akira Tozawa, did you, did you learn anything from him? Did, could, did you take anything positive away from that? Oh, man. There's very few people I have I struggle to say bad things about. <laughs> Kira Tozawa might be one of them. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll give him one thing. Like, I don't know how he does it, and it really annoyed me. But that crowd just loves him, just absolutely loves him. Um, and I, I don't even know. He just he makes some noises, and the crowd loves him. So I'll give him that because that annoyed me because I'm, like, beat, beating him up, and they're cheering, and I was like, what am I? What, what do I got to do, lad? Solo Sokoa, you you faced him uh, a few times as well. I did, and I beat him. I beat a member of the bloodline. Not many people can say that. I beat Solo Sokoa, and I'll keep saying it. Uh, Solo Sokoa, um, I'll, I'll say this. He's very close to being Australian because he does a lot of stuff yeah. without shoes on. He does stuff with no shoes okay. on. In Australia, I walk around no shoes on. That impresses me. You know, Not many people can do that, especially in this country. So he's the closest to Australian that I think they have here. Don't you all have, like, scorpions and stuff just running around everywhere over there? Yeah, we do, but we're tough. We ain't stressed. Okay, that's fair. Uh, you know, I got I to gotta say, Braun Breaker, just, what, what do you have nice about him? I mean, you, oh. you kind of complimented him earlier, but... What about his style? You want to talk about a superstar? Braun Breaker manages to wear three different things of denim at one time. Very few people can pull that off. Like, he has the ability to look both like a 40-year-old and a 15-year-old at the same time. Not many people can do that. That's very, very impressive. Bron, man, put that on a poster. He's got a denim cap, a denim jacket, a denim shirt. Man, like, what a fantastic superstar for NXT. NXT New Year's Evil Tuesday. 
January 10th on the USA Network, Grayson Waller against Braun Breaker. Grayson, thank you so much for, for taking the time. It was, it was great to speak with you. Hope that we get to do it again. Um, yeah, maybe like my time's valuable, Sean Ross, Simp, but like, if you're lucky, like, uh, I, I might say hello again. Until next time, guys, we're out. <laughs>